simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com From Austin, Texas, it's Alex Jones. The truth is, folks, the 5-0 throughout history and in every authoritarian regime that are the majority of regimes worldwide currently are there to keep the general public in line and tax them and generate revenue. They are not there to hunt down criminals. And the last 20 years, the FBI, the IRS have gotten rid of almost all their white-collar fraud investigators. Uh, and now the FBI a month ago officially said they're not even going to focus on white collar issues, period. Their main focus is terrorism. That means power grabbing and fighting imaginary enemies that they actually finance. That's the bottom line. Going after reporters, going after leakers, going after the press. And you've got more news out today I'm going to be getting to with members of Congress and others calling for the arrest of anyone that reports corruption. And saying that Snowden and uh, you know Greenwald especially is a criminal that needs to be arrested. When Greenwald exposed the stolen data of the American people that the government is stealing illegally. They exposed the crime. Remember, senior congressman attempts to get FBI director to say investigative journalism is a crime. He basically says it is. He calls Greenwald a thief stealing stolen material, close quote. That's a representative Mike Rogers of Minnesota. I mean, with Republicans like this, who needs Democrats? I mean, this is just unbelievable that they're talking about stolen data. You're the ones that are stealing it all in public plain view and have been caught lying saying you weren't. And you've got the nerve to call people criminals and traitors who they've only released the fact that you're spying on everybody and how you're doing it, which was already known from previous NSA whistleblowers. 
The only difference is, is that The Guardian was willing to publish this stuff and that Snowden went to Hong Kong and then to Russia. And because he went to Russia, the media tried to spin it and thought they could demonize leakers to try to tie it to Russia and cloak and dagger clandestine garbage. The Russians don't need to know from Snowden what's going on. It's all hardwired into all the internet infrastructure. If I knew all about this by 1997, more than what you've heard from Snowden, exactly what I've told you about the NSA has now been all confirmed. Because I know real NSA whistleblowers, people that would meet me at the rodeo, at the car show, at the book signing, at the video signing. People would meet me in the, show up in the parking lot and give me stuff that was so classified, I didn't even know what I was getting, and I would shred the stuff. And I got death threats over it as well. It's all on record. It's all on record, I told you. It's all for economic espionage. It's to predict the future in mass movements, individual movements. It's wired into everything. It's watching. It's listening. It's collating. It's the smart grid. We told you. We told you everything. The Russians know all this. And then I had James Bamford on in 98 and 2000, the, the former producer of Nightline, who got all the classified documents. And Wayne Madsen in the late 90s, right through to now. I've been interviewing Madsen for 15, 16 years. And, and what I'm getting at here is I'm not bragging, saying, oh, we covered all this and nobody else did. That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying it's not a secret. It's not a secret. It's not a secret. It's not a secret that our military, since Vietnam at least, ships in the majority of the heroin, the majority of the cocaine. The Nazis took over the, the heroin trade when they were able to take over Italy and uh, Greece at the time um, and uh, other areas there in the Mediterranean, Cyprus. And then when... When, when, the, when we invaded to take it back from the Nazis, the, the, they just took over the criminal networks and the criminal keys. And the argument was, if they didn't work with the mafia, they would have sided with the Nazis. But from day one, that's why the CIA uses Italian hitmen so often. is because they're from overseas, they're in a code, they'll never talk, and they don't even know who hired them. They're ordered by their bosses to go kill people. It's the perfect go-between. And then, and then the media uses the ignorance of the public and goes, well, was it Italian hitmen or was it, was it British hitmen or was it CIA hitmen? I mean, they say it's the CIA, the Italian mafia, the British jackal. I mean, who was it? <laughs> it's all the same group. It's organized crime, folks. Grow up. Stop being naive. I have had multiple members of my family who were in the U.S. Army and were officers that were involved in serious stuff. And they didn't even tell me much of it. Just, oh, yeah, you're on target and you're right. I have a great uncle who recently died who was an Army officer and was brought into the CIA and got out of it. Would not do the stuff they wanted him to do. He did a lot of stuff but wouldn't do what they wanted him to do in Chicago in Chicago. And by the way, this means my family is some special family. Folks, you, you talk about Texas, South Texas, West Texas, East Texas, Central Texas. It's like CIA recruiting area. Because they all know where, look at Audie Murphy, all the Texans. I mean, the government got it in its head that Texans will get the job done. Heavy recruiting out of Texas, the Midwest as well. And I mean, let me tell you, it's a giant army of people, folks. Most army officers that have been in combat and been in multiple decades are not really even army officers, ladies and gentlemen. They're in the shadow government. And I am so sick of how mindlessly naive the general public is. You need to grow up and you need to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. You want to know how it really is? They make it funny and stylize it, so I didn't like the movie, but the information was actually very accurate, other than the fact that it made it very cartoonish. Two guns. I saw that a few months ago. And you know who was in the audience when I watched Two Guns? Special Forces, police, and FBI agents. You could tell, that's FBI, that's a federal marshal, those guys are military. When the movie ended, I'd walk over and talk to them. They're like, yeah, how do you know that? Oh, give me a break. You all guys all look like what type you are. And they were all there laughing and smiling during it because it was like some revelation of the method 
It's a Mark Wahlberg, um, Denzel Washington movie. I'm not going to give the whole movie away, but but it's 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 just every element of the government is dealing drugs. Every element, the CIA, the DEA, the FBI, the Marines, the Navy. Because, folks, let me explain something to you. That's how it really works. And it is unbelievable. And guess who runs the whole thing? The State Department. State Department runs the whole show. The CIA, the NSA, the, the, the Pentagon, everything. Because State Department's been, been around the longest. It's got all the tentacles in, all the command points. And the reason I go off into that whole diatribe is this shadow government is now absorbing the economy and has put out directives to ban bake sales and, and kids selling lemonade and, and, and little girls baking cupcakes and telling people that you can't have eight kids over for a birthday party in your own rural uh, farmhouse. That was in the news Monday. You go, why is this happening? Forbes ask. The weak ask. All these publications go, why is there a war directed by the feds to the states? Because they we're in a prison, folks. I don't want to live under a Pentagon and a CIA that wants to ban lemonade stands. I mean, you people are scum and you know it. And it's not cute like two guns where everybody's out killing each other and everybody's a gangster and has all this money. You are wrecking the country. And I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of the naivete of the police out there to the arrogant level of arresting and beating up and choking paramedics because after 15 minutes on the side of the road, they go, that's it. You pulled us over because we didn't get out of your way when we can't. And then they start choking them. And then they go, well, he assaulted us. We're going to charge him. And the public saw the video and there was such outrage, they backed off. They were going to put the paramedic in jail and charge them. They were gonna charge until there was backlash in a camera, the firefighter. They're going to, I mean, this is crazy land, crazy land. And the cop says, I gotta go around you in Oklahoma and then pulls them over for 15 minutes if he had to get somewhere so bad. This is all about, I'm a gangster, do what I say. And you've been given this illegitimate power because the country has been taken over, period. You need to wake up to that. You need to understand that, ladies and gentlemen, and stop being so naive. Now, let's go ahead and go back to that CBS News report out of California where the highway patrol officer, public servant, arrest the other public servant, firefighter, uh, for parking on the shoulder out into one lane of a three-lane highway. And you can see the traffic flying by. It's not stopping traffic. Plus, they're going to stop anyways if you park on the shoulder. Because everybody wants to rubberneck and look, but plus you couldn't park the fire truck on the on the little shoulder. The cops obsess over safety all day, and then they just tell the fire truck move. It's crazy. Let's go ahead and go to this video. Firefighters say they park at an angle to protect emergency crews, patients, and drivers. We're in the middle of patient care with patients on the freeway. They're putting them in handcuffs at this time and walking them away. We spoke to the union president for Chula Vista Fire who says Gregoire did the right thing to protect the public. I'm very proud of Jake. He made all firefighters look good in that situation because he, he was there to protect the citizens and he was willing to take a stand to do that. This isn't the first time a firefighter has been detained. We found it happened happened in Santa Barbara involving a CHP and a firefighter in Missouri. A firefighter was arrested by police and he was awarded 17 grand in a civil suit. Back here in Chula Vista, we're told that this isn't the first time that this type of dispute has happened, just never handcuffed until this moment. I truly believe in my heart that this is going to get solved. Now, Greg Wall was released about a half hour after being detained in the handcuffs. Brass from CHP and the fire department met this morning. They released this joint statement. In summary, it assures this is an isolated incident and both agencies strive for public safety and this should not happen again. We have reached out to firefighter Greg Wall, but he did not answer. I mean, you've got a car flipped over in the road and you got the fire truck could not park on the shoulder with the highway divider out in the road. And what is he supposed to do? This is crazy land. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, let's go back. This has got a bunch of cussing. We're going to try to bleep it out. If not, we'll delay it out on the radio stations. But you listen to NPR, they play cussing.